for Manic Street Preachers and everything must go. It's Radio 1 and uh, I'm very, very happy indeed now to welcome the triumphant Nicky Wire, my pet Manic Street Preacher actually, as we like to call him, and uh, winner last night of two Brit Awards for Best Album and Best Group. It is official. Nicky, hiya. Hello there. How are you then? I am fine. I'm fine fertile this morning. Are you? And what were your celebrations like last night then? Very muted. Were they? Very well, quite exaggerated for me, you know, like I said, I was up to half twelve, my latest night half in, 12. in five years probably. Really? My latest night out. <laughs> so what was it like for you last night? Uh, you know, I enjoyed it. It's, not, it's probably a once in a lifetime experience. How did you feel about, I mean, what, you know, you've got the brats, and how did this compare? Well, it's obviously bigger, I suppose this is, you know, the brats, the Golden Globes, and these are the Oscars. It was very emotional. <laughs> Evening, when I mean when you won best group, um, the, the like two tables I think were kind of your team, and I think everyone was in tears. Uh, yeah, it was some, uh, especially with Vinnie Jones and Colin Jackson presenting it. There was a kind of electrifying bonding in the air, which was is it quite really? rare for us. You know, we were we were quite we came out of our shells a touch. You did. Yeah, it was. It was you were really nice. jovial on stage. Yeah, as we said. it was. It was. No, it was. It was a nice moment. You know. Okay, that was actually the answer to the two, so thank you very much for saying that, because that was uh, they were the ones who presented you with the award last night. Yeah, they were indeed. You will make a very good radio DJ one day. <laughs> when, when we can eventually get you into actually getting get me out of bed from Leeds. Yes. <laughs> uh, Zoe Ball was saying, is this true, last night, she was saying that she was really hoping that you were going to be winning the award, because then she could give you a, a peck on the cheek, and you said, I don't kiss other women. Well, it's true. I, I make a point of it, you know, I never, I never kiss any other women. Red company women are always trying to neck you abroad, so, you know, just like... <laughs> To greet you, <laughs> and before you know it, they got you hanged down the throat. <laughs> and your yeah. wife was there last night, wasn't she? Was, yeah, but it's, I, it's part of my principles anyway, you know. It's too European for me, I'm the British stiff up lip, you know. Yes. You've been kind of upstaged by the Spice Girls, your Welsh flag that you ran on stage with last night, didn't you kind of have the same effect? You're not on the front cover of the sun today. No, I, and my chest is not big enough. No, you have to work on that. It's James, you see, James can work on that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I have a sport bra on. What about the rest of the band? Were they uh, out celebrating last night? Yeah, I think James was um, up for it, mad for it. Yeah. As the saying goes, but I don't know what Sean did. Sean looked very shell-shocked. I did see him at one point. They were trying to open Harvey Nichols for Sean at 3 o'clock this morning because he had his friends on like There were some gadgets that he'd seen <laughs> that he had to go and buy. He had to rush. Before we actually played, he had to rush and buy some Gucci loafers because he was a, he desperately wanted a pair. And when it came to doing the song, he can't drum in shoes. So there's, there's this massive panic as we were trying to find him a pair of trainers, but you have to do it in shoes in the end, so I don't know what I sounded like. What was it like when you were performing? I enjoyed that, you know, I like playing a, an audience who's just kind of staring at you, you know, not just sort of adoring. Mm. It was, you know, quite a challenge. I would have thought you'd absolutely hate it last night, though, because it is the whole industry. I mean, surely it's everything that you despise. To be honest with you, you know, the things I despise are much, you know, on a wider scale than just a little than the music industry when we started a band you know the things we really hated were much more political and you know far reaching than just the music industry you know it's, you've got to work with those people it's not they're not the worst people in the world i don't mind decadence and showbiz you know it's it's good for it's good you've for always liked that actually yeah no i don't partake in it myself so it's kind of nice to be in around it once a year what did you think then of all the uh, performances last night the spice girls are you a big fan of them? Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I, I think they were fine. I think they were quite fine. exciting. <laughs> no, they were, you know. Events, why don't you? Well, I do, I, I quite like them. You know, I think the three singles are really good. I don't know why they did their new single, because I think that's mm. pretty dreadful. Mm. But the three singles before have been brill. So you're still a, a fan as much as ever of uh, pop music? Yeah, but I don't listen to you so much now, because you're not on in the evenings. So. Well, you'll have to change your lifestyle. I <laughs> will. I'll have to get up earlier. Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> oh, we'll play some pop music now. This is Anton Deck, and we'll talk after this. <laughs> It's Anthem Deck and Shout. Uh, so we are a fan of that kind of pop music. What do you think of that, Nicky? This is Nicky from the Manic Street Preachers. Walk on the Wild Side. Yeah, quite. I've dated. Ah, I like Anthem Deck. Do you? As people. Uh, do you watch their TV show? The one which has got swapped from BBC for being a bit mm -hmm. outrageous. Yeah. yeah. I watched it. They're pretty good comedians. Aren't yeah, they? I know I you're like a TV Anthem freak, Deck. so. Yeah, exactly. They're good boys, and they're good Geordie boys. Okay, so that's all right. What was the worst moment for you last night? What did you think was just dreadful? Oh, I, I think the Skunk and Nancy thing was just amazingly bad TV. It's like the bad old days of the 80s, you know. I'm just really surprised they did it with those dancers. And... Mm. 
I don't know whether the dancers were their idea, actually. No, I know, but I just, I was just Perfect. amazed, you know, for, you know, because I kind of think against them as a group, but I was just startled. It was obviously a very good idea that didn't quite work out. <laughs> yeah, we well, don't feel so I suppose I can't do it. Uh, what's what's the low anything. point of your career then? That'd be interesting. Gold against the soul. Oh yeah. The whole I've album. Said that before, <laughs> <laughs> no, plenty of times. Richie falling asleep on James's foot on stage. That was pretty. That was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, but pretty bad for the audience. What does the rest of the year hold for you then? Just not a lot, really. No, we're doing this April tour, and this because we're going to write lots of lyrics. Have you started already? We've got a couple on the go, but nothing. Nothing too drastic. No. I know that you've got a phobia of planes, first of all, but uh, also festivals, so you're not <laughs> conquering that this year. Fair enough, but it's just, just absolutely fantastic, because I'm reading you about Dennis Burkamp, mm -hmm. the terror I live with every day of my life. He says he won't play for Holland or Arsenal anymore if he has to fly, because people think there's nothing wrong with me and want to give me a push on the plane, and that gets me really angry, because there's nothing I fear more. So he's like, I'm real mad after my whole life. I might write a song about Dennis Burkamp there. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and Jay, Jay will be going, oh, God, I've got to... Does he get really annoyed with you? Because some of the lyrics, I mean, that he has to sing, must they be do. Nicky. These self-pitying sort of transcribes, I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think we might do a couple of festivals, but... With gritted, with gritted teeth. With gritted teeth, yeah. <laughs> don't, you, uh, don't you conquer your fear of flying with chips? Yeah, I've got a special British Airways plate of chips delivered. <laughs> did they do that? They featured chips? They did, yeah, yeah, especially. They didn't... I don't think they liked doing it for me, but... No, I'm not surprised. Well, I'm going to try that over the weekend because I've got to fly over the weekend, so I'm having nightmares about that. Oh, I do. Yes. Um, have you got a timetable over the next year of kind of like expectations when you've got to bring stuff by? Or are you just, is it literally like, we'll do it however we want, when we want? Well, I think we, we don't want to pass around, so to speak. You know, we want to get a record out as soon as we can, but, you know, I can't tell when that's going to be. James is really, you know, badgering me for lyrics all the time. Is he? I just, you know, I'm a bit slower these days and I've got lots more to do because Richie's not around, so, you know, I've just got to be a bit more work on, like... Mm. Are you feeling the pressure? Or? A little bit, yeah, just about things to write about, you know. I don't want to moan about myself all the time. So what are you writing about at the moment? What, what's <laughs> I don't know, I haven't done anything. <laughs> right, OK. I've done a few, but, you know... <laughs> I pretend I've done a few to James just to keep him interested. They don't just think too much. Go off with your showbiz friends and do yeah. something with Kylie Minogue or something yeah, like that. Yeah, come on. Who, who do you particularly like at the moment? Which bands are you a big fan of? Oh, like, playing wise or liking mm. wise? Playing at home. Yeah, playing at home. I like. I really like Beatles Bum. Yeah. I really like Beatles Bum. I feel like it really kind of inspired me to write a lyric. You know, just as girls or boys did before in a negative way, they've done it in a positive way. Yeah. What do you think of the whole, um, you know, this Blur album? Presumably you've listened to the album. Well, I think it's the best album we ever done. Yeah? You know. Okay, oh, that's not hard. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to play, what do you think of the Bee Gees last night? Yeah. I, I think it's really good that they have a big showbiz blitz at the end of every bridge, you know, because it's... You know, ITV go down to loads of ordinary people. They don't want to see like dodgy indie bands all the time, do they? No. You know, they want to see a big show. And I'm really not going to think against that. Okay, so one dodgy indie band was okay last night. Yeah. You got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Bee Gees. Okay, it justified that record. Well, the Bee Gees last night won the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award, and then they did this uh, performance. It was a bit like karaoke or some kind of like mega mix, wasn't Chicken it? Chicken in a basket. Yeah, just like that. Oh, it's fantastic though. Yeah, it was. I it was kind of really, really divided. There were like loads of people flooding away and sort of going, oh, I can't stand this. And then other people going, no, they were really good. I think a lot of people actually got up and danced to them as well. Did you? On the oh, table? No, no, no. That was Sean, was it? <laughs> it was Martin. <laughs> Martin Hall? Indeed, yeah. How was he last night? I don't know. He's probably in a kebab shop somewhere still. What, no, he, was <laughs> he looked a very proud man, I have to he say. Did, he was. He was trying to kiss me all night. Was he? Do hear me? What about Rob Strong? You always name check the same two people whenever you collect any of these awards. I mean, not something predictable or anything like that. Yeah, well, what, I mean, what kind of a part have they played? Well, Rob Strong signed us and, you know, kept us and even at our commercial low point with the Holy Bible when we did sell any records at all, you know, still allowed us to spend loads of money and do whatever we wanted. So, you know, the Martins, you know, been there from the start. You've got a very good kind of a support team around you. Really? Yeah, psychology team. <laughs> Right, okay, we'll pass over that one then. What's it like when you go back home and, uh, 
you know, now that you've won this and that, I mean, you didn't actually make it onto the front page of the Sun or stuff, but no. if you go to the news agents, would they be saying, oh, Nikki? I'm, glad we've, been, I'm glad we've avoided the kind of tabloid X connotations of winning two awards, to be honest with you. You know, mm. it's not something I particularly want to get involved with. You know, no. so I'm, maybe we'll get on cover the Western Mail or South Wales Argus or something. Do you do interviews with local papers? I've done in the past. I have done, you know, it's no worse than local radio. Uh, or Radio 1, in fact. Quite. Giggle, giggle, giggle. Uh, we're going to play another record now from the album. There aren't going to be any more singles from this album, are we? No, Joe A&R, this one, said we're kind of the fifth single. No. Do you have any kind <laughs> of... Do you have any great desire to uh, kind of do a you know, radical departure with the next album? Have you got any kind of idea of what music's going to be like? No, I mean, I don't think we'll... I don't think we want to pretend, you know, we kind of assimilated dance culture and make a disco album or anything like that, because I think they're usually pretty sad attempts at doing it, so, you know, mm. I think we're unique in our own way, and I don't know what James has got musically, you know, ideas-wise, but we yeah. shall see. Okay. Well, then... Welsh Harp album, perhaps. Oh, lovely, well, looking forward to that one. When something like this happens, like when you're winning the Brits, is Richie very much on your mind, or do you... No, definitely. This award is as much for him as it is for us, you know, and co wrote five of the lyrics with me. Mm. And, you know, even if he never writes a song with us ever again, you know, there's still a part of him on every record we'll ever do. You know, because when you grow up together so closely, you kind of speak in the same tongues and language, and it, it just comes out naturally, subconsciously, you know, it'll always be there. Do you, have, do you have any kind of expectation or hope that? You might, you know, get a phone call one day and it'll be Richie or... I mean, especially if something kind of like this, you know, monumental happens in your career or so, at certain points, do you think maybe you'll get in touch now or something? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'll, it would ever be because of a, a big thing like this. Right. It'd, be, it'd be from something tiny and trivial and, you know, very Richie-like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just hope he phones his mum and dad as much as anything anyway, because that'd be the nicest thing you could do. Okay, Nikki, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. And, uh, this is one of the best tracks on the album. This is No Surface All Feeling. Thank you.